In my time playing Pokemon ROM hacks, there's always been a common trend that is very hard to ignore. You play as a Pokemon trainer who goes on a journey through a region, collects all eight gym badges, stops the evil team, and becomes the champion. Sure, there are a few exceptions, especially in the fan game scene, but when it comes to ROM hacks, they're very few and far between. So when I heard about a ROM hack that not only removed the gym and league system, but also introduced a new world and exploration style, I knew I had to give it a try. But first, I would like to thank the developers of Pokemon Odyssey for not only making a great hack, but also allowing me to beta test the game before release. With that out of the way, let's jump straight into it. Let's start with the exploration. In Pokemon Odyssey, there are two different worlds, I guess I'll call them, to explore. The first is the Yggdrasil Labyrinth. Sorry if I had pronounced that wrong. A gigantic maze full of treasures that has attracted the attention of adventurers all around the world. As the focal point of the story, you will be sent to explore massive areas within this maze called stratums. Each stratum is made up of vastly different biomes and Pokemon to capture. And I really do mean it, you're not going to spend your entire adventure running into Pidgeys and Rattatas, or whatever common Pokemon you usually find in 50% of most wild encounter areas. I'm only going to be showing gameplay from the first three stratums, because I honestly don't want to spoil this adventure for anyone, as it's something I think is best experienced as blind as possible. Alongside the main story, there is also a plethora of side content available primarily through naval exploration. Once you complete the first main objective, you'll unlock the ability to sail across the sea and unlock over 10 different islands to explore. Each island comes with its own people, Pokemon, and sometimes even side quests and treasures. But traversing the ocean does come with its own set of challenges. You'll be stopped in your path by wild Pokemon, pirates, and even whirlpools that'll send you all the way back home. I really like that this game has a lot of things to do if you get burnt out of the main story. But I personally don't think that'll happen very often as the plot is actually pretty good. ROM hacks usually aren't known for having superb storytelling. Even a game like Unbound that gets praised throughout the community sort of lacks an interesting plot, at least in my opinion. So the good writing in Odyssey kind of caught me off guard. The first thing that I noticed was that I was actually playing as a character with a voice and personality, rather than a speechless vessel like most other Pokemon games. Another thing I instantly noticed that was very different was the lack of handholding. Sure, I was told where to go, but before heading there, I could buy some Pokeballs and even catch a few Pokemon in a nearby forest. Once I left the home island, rather than being given a Pokedex and being told to travel the region and collect 8 gym badges, you are instead invited to the Explorer's Guild and are tasked with exploring the Yggdrasil Labyrinth with two other mysterious characters. Each important character feels unique in their own way, and while the plot may start out very lighthearted, I promise it does take a bit of a darker turn. But don't worry, I don't think it would be considered edgy, as I'm aware that it's a fear most fan game players have. Although, exploration and storytelling aren't everything when it comes to a Pokemon game. But luckily, there are some additional features that find a way to spice up this experience even more. First off, a good amount of effort has been made to reduce the grind that you would find in normal games. Training a team of 6 will be easy with the EXPL at your disposal, but don't worry, I never felt my Pokemon were over leveled because of it. All wild Pokemon will also have perfect IVs, so you won't have to worry about breeding or grinding to get decent ones like you normally would. One of the bigger features I wanted to talk about was the Pokemon rebalancing. Now, while Odyssey only features the first three generations of Pokemon, with of course a few evolution exceptions, I promise that amount will feel a lot bigger than it seems. Every Pokemon has been modified in one way or another. Pokemon that had bad stats now have better ones. Pokemon that didn't learn any good moves now have access to better ones. Plus, once a Pokemon reaches its final form, it can learn powerful moves from the free mover learner at your home base. So while there are only around 400 Pokemon to capture, I really don't think it'll feel that way, as the weak Mons you would usually ignore don't exist. 
While I'm talking about balance, I might as well share some advice for your playthrough. When you first arrive at the guild base, you'll have access to an infinite wonder trade that includes all 9 starters. So if you want to use a traditional starter, rather than the ones the game provides you with, that's right there for you. I also suggest picking up a grass or water type, as the TMs for Giga Drain, Water Pulse, and Ice Beam are available very early, and will help you deal with the treacherous desert that lies beyond the game's equivalent of a tutorial area. The final piece of Odyssey I want to talk about is the difficulty. When starting, you can choose between Normal and Hard Mode. I unfortunately won't be able to tell you what Normal Mode is like, but with how Hard Mode is, I don't think it'll be too difficult for a casual player. If you haven't noticed so far, the game is fully focused on double battles. While the fights I played through were challenging, I can't say they're on par with the difficulty that some ROM hacks like Radical Red offer in their hardest modes. Throughout the game, I had about 15 Pokemon on rotation for the different bosses, so I definitely don't think you'll be able to plow through hard mode with just a team of 6. I also wanted to mention the Nuzlocke ability of this game. While I wasn't Nuzlocking myself, I did have a pretty hard time keeping team members alive in important fights. This obviously wasn't a problem for me, but it would be detrimental if I was actually playing on a Nuzlocke. If you happen to recognize this hack as something that was only halfway finished, then don't worry, because the game was actually updated the day of or before this video's upload. I hope you check it out, because I personally think it has the potential to be one of the best Pokemon ROM hacks ever. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and have a nice day.